give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, because you are our strength and our portion forever, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, that you cover us daily, O oh God. Father God, and you lead us into green pastures, O oh God. Father God, right now, O oh God, I ask you to hide me behind you, O oh God. Father God, that Peggy will die, O oh God, and you will arise, O oh God. Father God, arise, O oh God, and make my tongue a pen of a ready writer, O oh God. Father God, let me not speak of myself, O oh God, but speak only what you've given me, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, I give you glory, God. I give you honor, O oh God. I just praise your name, O oh God. Father God, because you're praiseworthy, O oh God. Father God, because you're good, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, O oh God, for your grace, O oh God. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, for your outstretched hand, O oh God. Father God, because you do miracles so great, oh God. I thank you and praise your holy name, oh God. Father God, that you anoint us afresh, oh God. Father God, that you breathe on us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, you cause us to leap over walls, oh God, and jump over troops, oh God, that a bow of steel is broken by our arms, oh God. Father God, you teach our hands to war, oh God, and our fingers to fight, oh God. Father God, we are strengthened, oh God, by your word alone. Alone, oh God. Let us continue to feast on your word, oh God. Let us continue, oh God, to exalt you, oh God. Father God, I thank you, oh God, that our, your word is not for us, oh God. Father God, but us to tell somebody else about you, oh God. So Father God, let us not keep your word to ourselves, oh God, but spread it abroad, oh God, to the north, east, west, and south, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I give you glory, oh God. I praise you, oh Lord. I I praise you, oh God, with all that's in within me, oh God. I praise your name, oh God, and I bless you forevermore, oh God. I thank you, God, and I bless your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you would, um, turn with me to Ecclesiastics um, 5. Verse 4 through 6, and it reads, When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the works of thine hands? Okay, now we're going to turn over to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, starting with verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost, Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, yes. my Lord, yes. for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. We go to 13 and conclude with 14. Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended. Yes. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I toiled with this message, and I was like, God, um, I said, um, this is a familiar passage, but if you're a Christian, and a believer, all of it's familiar to you. Amen. So my sermon title is The Journey and the Cost of Yes. Mm. Lord. I want to give you two definitions. Cost, a sacrifice, mm -hmm. loss, pen penalty. Mm -hmm. To cause to lose or suffer the price paid. To acquire, produce, accomplish, or maintain anything. Then God showed me press. 
press is to act upon with steadily applied weight or force. To move by weight or force in a certain direction or into a certain position. And when I thought about this, we really don't consider the cost of yes. We say yes, we're excited, we're happy, that we, you know, we're moved by our emotions, and we say yes to a many of things. But when we say yes to Christ, have we really considered the price? We haven't considered the price. We want him, but we don't want to obey him. We, we say yes to the offices that we are, uh, that God has called us to be in, but we don't want the territory that goes with it. And so yes becomes difficult. And I tie it into the journey because you can't have the journey without yes. And the journey, Paul writes about the journey, and he writes about a race, not one of competition, but a race that we believe it should be in to keep pressing. And so there are some things that we have to give up, but we refuse to give up. We want to hold on to parts of the world. Yeah. We want to hold on to our familiar sins. And so we let them stick fast to us. And we not, and still, again, we haven't considered the yes. But the relationship, the race, is about being fully surrendered. The commitment, that's the yes in spite of. Relationship, that's intimacy. Yeah. And sacrifice, sac it's sacrificial. So we have to give up something in order to gain. And if you want to gain, you're going to have to give up self first. You're going to have to give up some of the things that we hold dear. You know, the... Um, the uh, materialistic stuff, our homes, our cars, you know, our family. And it reminds me of the man who said, um, I have to go back and bury my son. And God said, let the dead bury the dead. Pick up your cross and follow me. And sometimes it gets difficult because, in, in part, we want some of those things, like our familiar friends. But our friends are not on the same side as we are. They're on a different side. And so although we can be friends with them, you're going in a different direction. God is guiding your steps. And so you're going to have to let go of some of those too, if not all. And it becomes difficult. Yeah. And that's your sacrifice. And God told you that this journey, it will be super uh, sacrificial. So in it being sacrificial, you're going to have to give up some stuff. And, and, and it's gonna, you're going um, to be, um, you're, you're, you're going to be, um, Jesus, you, you're going to have to uh, sacrifice things that mean so much to you. You know, we enter the race. And this is the race after we're fully um, surrendered, after we're fully committed to God, mm -hmm. and we're in this race. In the world, we give three prompts for a race. Ready, set, go. Amen. Ready is the preparation. Okay, God, what do I need to do to yeah. enter into the yeah. race? And so I'm ready. Okay, I got on the um, head of salvation, the breast pace plate of righteousness. My loins are girded with truth, my feet with the preparation of the gospel. And God, I'm ready. I'm excited. And so I'm in this race and I begin to run. And then here's a hindrance. Here's a blockage. Here's some trials and tribulations unexpectedly. And I begin to lose hope, but I keep running. And somewhere on the, on, in, in the race, here comes some stuff that just to knock me down. Yeah. And I get back up and I talk to my father and I'm reminded of I'm reminded of the things that he once told me in the race. Finish strong, endure, yes. keep awesome. pressing. I'm reminded of yes. those things, but yet the distractions come to take you off course. And so I find myself on the sideline. And on the sideline 
it becomes difficult to get back in the race. But I, that's where I, 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 did a, mm, I did a 180, and I turned around, and I saw all those familiar things that I once did. And I only glanced for a second because if I had continued to look, I just might ran backwards. And so I kept my foot and my steps forward so that I could finish the race. But then there was some blockage and some more stuff. And I'm going to give a testimony right here. Uh, when Pastor Fields first asked me to preach here, I, I committed myself, and um, then I wrote him an email and said that um, maybe another day. And he he was on his prayer line, and he kept announcing my name. I said, "Why did this guy keep announcing my name?" And I done said, <laughs> I done said, <laughs> I done said um, that another day. And I thought you had so and so. I I taught my spiritual daughter, I said, you know, and the second time he announced my name, I was in the library. Uh, you know, we're going to have Evangelist Peggy coming at 3 p.m. And I, and God began to convict me right then and there. He said, you know, you're aborting what I told you. And I, I began to get real teary. I began to cry in the library. And my spiritual daughter had called me, and she go, Miss Evangelist, what's going on? I said, I said I gave him an email and said I couldn't make it, and it wasn't because I couldn't. It's because of my selfishness and me just saying, no, I, I got a lot of stuff going on right now. But see, I forgot the cost of yes. I forgot the cost of yes. And I, I was broken. Even this morning, I said, well, I'm just going to go over to Maryland just today. And I just pulled over. And here goes my tears again. I said, God, I'm supposed to be going there. And I said, okay. I got myself together, and I pressed towards. I kept pressing. I said, God, it's in the pressing that it's going to be a blessing, and I got to be obedient. And God, and I just had to have a talk with him and tell him, God, you know, I'm sorry. I, You know, I don't never want to walk in disobedience. I don't never want to not give you my all after all you've done for me. And many people, and, and, and Paul says, not that I've already apprehended. Come on. Yes. I don't know everything. Yes. I'm still a learner. Right. I'm still a sojourner yes. on, on a journey. That's and right. so I got to keep the pace regardless. I got to tell self, you got to die every day. Yeah. You got to keep pressing because there's some things that I'm ordering your stuff and I'm taking you to this direction. Yeah. I'm taking you to this, this direction so I can get the glory. It's not about you. It's not about what you want to do or where you want to go. It's where I'm sending you. You said I'm available and here I am and yet yeah. you don't want to be available and yet you don't want to go. But I have sent you and you're refusing to go. And you know God chastened those whom he loved. And I thank God for his love. I thank God for the journey. The journey has many twists and turns. And so what you think that you should be doing and what God has already spoken, I, I, every night when I went to sleep, God just kept giving me stuff, kept giving me stuff. And I was like, God, I said, I'm okay. I said, I'm a little tired. And I would sit up and I would get my notebook and I would write and I would say, okay, God. I'm going to do this. And um, I heard my, um, my spiritual daughter, she kept saying, Miss Evangelist, you better call and tell him. I said, I don't have his number. <laughs> she said, you better write him and tell him disregard that first message. I said, you know, you're right. She said, it's pride. I said, yeah, pride. And in the middle of pride is I. And so, yes, I say, I said, yes, it is. I said, I'm the first to, you know, just tell you that I'm wrong and don't have any problems. So I apologize to you, Pastor Fields. I really honestly do. And and I was just sitting there thinking, say, God, you know, even then I was toiling with this message. But God kept reminding me of the yes. Yet 
It's yes is not in part. It's yes. That means you fully surrender. That means that you're going to do as he instructed you to do. That means that you're going to keep going in spite of any trials, any tribulations, any roadblocks, any hindrance. God says, God says to do and I am to go. He says, uh, he says to do and I am to do. He says to go and I am to go. But it is when we get the message, it is when your word, his word is deeply rooted inside of us that we have no problems in obeying, you know. And every time that God convicts me, you know, I cry before God. I cry and I tell him, God, I'm sorry, you know, because who, who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Oh, he is just so amazing. When we think about all the times, and I listened to the message this morning, and when we think about all the times that, where there was no food, lights cut off, eviction yeah. notice, yeah. who wouldn't serve a God like this? You know, he was that same God back then. He was that same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. he was that same God. And yeah. We have the nerve sometimes to doubt because it's not happening in our time. But God's time is the perfect time. And if we could just keep the press and stay in the race and continue oh, to yeah. run, yeah. We, there will be glory after this. After this. There yes. will be glory after this. Yes. But we have to have a made-up mind to serve oh, God. Yeah. A made-up mind. See, People can come and they can whisper in your ears, if it ain't God, I can't attend to it. If you ain't of God, I can't attend to it. I have to stay steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in his word, trusting what he says is going to come to pass. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, I am sold out to him. My life belongs to him. That's where the commitment and the yes comes in, that you commit it regardless of what you go through. There's going to be hardships. There's going to be tears. But God is still faithful. Yeah. He's faithful in yeah. everything yeah. that he do. And so we Hallelujah. thank him for that. We give him praise, oh God, because yeah. you're so good, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah yeah. 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 God. So we continue to press. Mm. People are going to fall away. Some family members are going to fall away. You may give the word, and the company may not want to publish it. But you keep pressing it, and you keep giving it, because somebody is going to want to hear it. I was in um, TGI Fridays yesterday, and I was eating. And um, something was wrong with my food, so the manager came. And he said, can I sit down? I said, certainly, sit down. He said, um, do you believe in God? He looked at my cross on my neck and he said you believe in God I said absolutely I do with my whole heart he said so you're a preacher or something I said I am he said oh I said well do you know him he said yeah sort of I said so what's the sort of he said well you know I know him he says your church locally I said I go to church in Springfield and I told him the name and he said oh okay he said, well, I work all the time. I said, well, when are you going to give God some time? And we both laughed, and, you know, I offered him some of my food. He's the manager there. He said, can I have a chicken wing? I said, sure, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, you work here. And, I, I, and so he, he sat down, and he was eating, and he was just interested in a conversation. And I asked him about his family. I said, well, why don't you take one Sunday off? I said, it's not going to hurt your pocket. I said, God is the multiplier of everything. Yeah. Where you think you lack, you will not lack because God will add unto you daily. If you trust him, if you surrender to him, if you walk with him, there is nothing lacking. He said that you will lack. He said the young lion do suffer and hunger, but there is no lack in him. I said, so you got to trust him. And he just kept staring at me. He said, so you don't date? I go, mm -mm, no, I don't. And I said, but well, what's this got to do with the conversation? And because he was a young guy, you know, about maybe 30, about my son's age. And he said, you don't see nobody interesting? I said, I see the Lord. I said, um, I said, you're married, right? 
He said yes, and I started laughing. <laughs> And I, I couldn't get, I couldn't get where his questions was coming from, so I just kind of like redirected him back to our conversation. I said, "So, do you, I said, do you have any interest? Do you want to come?" I said, "Let me write the address now." And I said, "I'm gonna write my name and I'm gonna write the pastor's name." And I said, "And one day, I said, God is gonna direct you there." He said, "Oh, okay." He told me he was from L.A. And I said, "Oh, okay." And um. You know, our conversation, he said, well, I got to go back to the kitchen. I said, you're probably full by now, right? And he just laughed because I'm giving sarcasm. You know, you eat my food. I said, you, you're probably full by now. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to go back to the kitchen. He said, but thank you. I really enjoy talking to you. I said, likewise. I said, have a great day. And I ended like that. But see, you never know. A poplar says one man plant another water, but God right. gives the increase. He is the change agent. I mm -hmm. said, so... You know, that seed was planted, and I take it that it will resonate in his belly somewhere, and they would move him to come and hear a word from God. But that's part of the yes, too. You are, you are in the military, they say you're a soldier 24, 24 hours, 365 days. And so we are in the Christian uh, army, and we are soldiers every day. It's never a time that we should sleep or slumber. That's the commitment. That's the yes. You know, and we need to count the cost of yes. The yes is that we have to set out to accomplish what God has put in us. Us, Each of us have a gift or many gifts. And so those gifts are to... To, to build the kingdom, line upon line, precept upon precept. Yes. And so in building the kingdom, we can't say, oh, I'm on a job with a bunch of cussers. I'm not going to go over there because they're not going to tell me off. I was like, honey, you better go over there and just tell them, um, do you mind not using those words? And you can just slide something in. It's like God is good. It's going to halt them in their hearts not to say those type of words. And, you know, you just saying that, somebody is going to come to you and say, oh, you're a Christian, and they're going to want to know more. It depends on how you plant that seed. See, when your yes is yes, you're going to treat people good. You're going to love them with that agape love. Hallelujah. Yeah, and God will direct you in every word that you need to say to them. So I thank God that when, even when I said yes to him, my father, who is no longer with us, um, he was in a hospital, and um, he hadn't awakened like in six or seven days. And I was in a hospital, and my family members come. And you know, sometimes people are partially in the church with one foot in and one foot out. and while he was there, they came to him and they go, well, Peggy, you might as well cremate him because, you know, um, your dad ain't got no money, y'all ain't got no money. I said, my father does. And I ignored them. And they kept talking and, you know, I was full with emotions and they kept talking and they kept talking. I said, excuse me. I said, I'm getting ready to pray. I said, when I pray, I said, my father's going to wake up in 30 minutes. And so they looked at each other, and I commenced to pray. And I, I prayed, and I said, now we can go outside, and whatever y'all need to say, y'all can say. And they were still, and I said, listen, I watched the clock. At, it's 1.15. At 1.45, I said, y'all, it's time to go back in the room. They were still talking, chatter, and I had just blocked it out because no negative spirits can. God, God, you know, God is at work, and so I'm not going to allow no negative spirits to get in my spirit to make me think otherwise. I knew that I had no fear factor, and I knew the deliverance is my portion. And so I went back in the room, and I called my dad's name. I said, Dad, and his eyes stretched open, and he sat up. I said, who am I? He said, you're my daughter. I said, and I looked at them, and my cousin was about to faint on one side, 
and it was a male and a female, and the male, the female, she was about to faint on the other side. I said, this is the God that I serve. And then they start to tell me, um, we, we called you a fake preacher, and we said you can't be no preacher. <laughs> and I laughed, I laughed, I laughed. I said, God, we use, as y'all say, the worst of us, huh? I said, but we all got a past. Mine's is just not secretive. I, I, I'm like David. I tell you, it's all about what you want to do with it after you know. And I, and I thank God that God allowed me to see a miracle that day. My father died shortly thereafter in 2013. But I thank God that he let me see a miracle, that he let his word come forth, that others, they too got to witness it. And mm -hmm. so, they, you know, he let me see it, and they let them see it. And I said, God, for your glory, yeah. for your glory, God, I will do what you tell me to yeah. do because that's where the position part comes in as well. Being in position in the race, the mark, and the go, you have to be in position and to move. And God say move and not to think of yourself. But I thank God for this opportunity. Yeah. I thank God for his word. Yeah. And I thank God for this help. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Agape Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Enzo James Fields invites you to come worship with us in Springfield, Virginia. We're located 7240 FNG Budenite Drive in Springfield, Virginia. Call 703-372-1174. Agape Worldwide Ministries. Real love, real people, real church.